Yes, and uh, we are here again with another episode of Dance Jams, you know, and um, we're going to talk about does form follow function or does function follow form. But as you know, I would never do this without my good friend, Ton. And uh, let me see if he's there. Hey, Ton, are you there? Hey, Sean, I'm there. And let's go i would say <laughs> yeah form. did you see um, did you see uh, my uh, suggestion to talk about it's one of those things that people talk about a lot in dancing does form follow function or does function follow form so um i thought it was an interesting uh, an interesting thing to talk about Absol know. absolutely interesting absolutely yeah. oh um, accidentally i put on the music and uh, yes hey good to see you Good to see you. And yesterday, your birthday was there. <laughs> it was my, depends on when you're listening to this podcast. But yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my, yes. Uh, when we record this, it was my birthday yesterday. Yeah. Yes, is, yes. Uh, that is correct, Tom. Yeah. Today, yeah. we are going to talk about function and form. Of course, we, we do it mostly in dancing. But maybe uh, you can give me a little bit. I know... Um, we both looked a little bit deeper into the where where is that coming from where is form and function what what does that mean um it comes from the industry uh sean mm -hmm. from the architect world mm -hmm. that's the first time when i came uh, in contact with it and i had did a research a little one and I came out by Bauhaus from Germany. And they worked very much from form uh, before function, uh, function before form. Yep. Yes. And yep. this is the first one where I find it. So 1919, 1922. Yeah. Yeah. Bauhaus was a movement. It's not, not a person. Eh? Bauhaus was a movement. Yes, uh, in uh, in in early in the early twentieth century, we can say that now. That's weird because we bo were both born there and talk about our birthday. Just for uh, for us, that doesn't feel so long ago, but it is actually over a hundred years ago when uh, the Bauhaus movement talked about uh, functionalities and form in relationship to each other, and it was not only effect on architecture, right, Tom? It had an effect on way more things than that. Yes, m may, uh, painters, um, architects, uh, designers, uh, dancers. So many people came at that time. I think it was 1919, around that time. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to bring all artists or um, all kind of arts together. And all this art, they want to find uh, the cohesi. Um, what's the word for that one? Um, for the people, the how it works together. So, and they had more an exchange about it. And the result was function before form. And they used the basic colors like uh, red, blue, and yellow. And that vision is still intact. And they worked also very geometric in a geometric way. Very straight, uh, less organic, not like in the Baroque. And I think it's a question of time, how they go through time. So it changed every 10 years, 100 years, you get a new influence. And that's then the style. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. Uh, there was, uh, I mean, it's interesting because you know I started to read more about it, and, and Bauhaus was uh, looking uh, very much looking at uh, you know the quality of the material that was used, and then put it then in a functional place. Um, we had uh, we had uh, another movement after that, which was more Bauhaus was German driven. And then after that became came a movement that uh, was a little bit more Dutch driven. Now it's not so strange because Dutch always have a lot of influence in art, anyhow, and also in design. And it was called the style, 
And Mondrian, you know, most people that listen to us know Mondrian, you know, with the red squares and the blue squares and stuff like that. But the interesting thing, what I discovered after our last discussion on this, Tom, that uh, Bauhaus was more functional driven and the intrinsic quality of the material, but the style people were also a little bit more spiritual driven in, in their design. So they were looking more at what they called the purity of form. It's interesting that there was uh, it one follows the other, but the other had a little bit more spiritual influence. And I didn't know that to be honest. I thought I thought Mondrian was a straight line from Bauhaus, but um, but the style actually had um, slightly different uh, thoughts on that. So things uh, evolve <laughs> in uh, follow each other up. I thought that was interesting. But both were talking about functions and styles and stuff like that. So if something is pure functional, Ton, what, what does that mean? Uh, let's um, put these two. Yeah, when you have a chair mm -hmm. and there is just straight legs under it, mm -hmm. uh, the leaning, it's very straight if there is one. So the function is then to sit and the cup you drink just adds a function. The cup, uh, you can put liquid in it and drink it. And uh, it could be water or tea or coffee. And um, it's, it's function. And when you look to the uh, uh, people, um, how, how you call them, um, the prehistoric people, the clothing, what they wear, at that time from the animals that was functional for the cold and uh, and when they make a hat for in the summer for the sun uh, from um, from leaves that was very interesting if you look now to the clothing it's more design driven form driven because the colors there are more colors there uh, more um, different text on it words on your shirt or a brand like a brand you have a brand on it like what i see with you you have white stripes there on your black one so you want to uh, make a difference through your closing through the design what you have but still it has a function so is now the form higher than the function or otherwise around so i would say it's form but not always form before function and then dance if we look to dance uh -huh. um, because it's a form of art and if you would have rules in it there then you would um, limit yourself to the art to the form so if you not have rules then the it's more design driven, form driven. I would can, say it can be. It doesn't have. Well, to yeah, it can be. Can be. Yes, can that's be, yes. it's the right yeah. wording. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a great explanation, Tone, because you look at my jacket that I'm wearing, right? The zipper, whether it was it's actually blue but not black, but you can see that. But if it's, it doesn't matter what color it was. The function is to open and close it, and that same thing is for the stripes on my arm. But uh, it, it, it's often also depending on the context because, you know, I choose a background here and I wanted to see a little bit when I demonstrate things. You know, I wanted to see that you can see my arm. So suddenly the stripes, they do have a function in this case. Or if it would be reflective, you know, and I say, well, I wear this jacket outside and when lights shine on me when I'm running, they can see me then, oh, I thought it was form but it actually has a function. Uh, same yes. thing with the cup, right? The, the cup is very functional. It's, you put something in it and then you can drink it and you can hold it and, and, and then like this. So on the other side, there's a logo. It's, uh, excuse me for the commercial. This is Starbucks, right? But it has no function for the drinking in itself. It has a function to distinguish myself saying, hey, I like Starbucks, but it also has a function, of course, for the makers of the mug saying, hey, we make commercial for it. But for the drinking, which is the context, it has no function at all, this thing. Huh? So 
I think that points out a little bit, um, and in dance, what you said, hey, if we just could free dance, then it's okay. But if you put it in a, in, in, in the setting of, for instance, a competition, or if you want to see a certain style, then you limit yourself, and then, and that could be for good reason. And then we talk a little bit more about function, but still, a lot of people just say it like that. So, I mean, I, you probably heard it in a slightly different context when my teacher said, No, Jean, it is always function before form. And I always said, Do, do you actually know what you're saying? Because I don't know what you're saying, but I don't think I agree with what you said. No, if you important. would reflect that to dancing, then yeah. everybody would look the same. Yeah, exactly. Is that what that's we want? What, that, that's what I thought. I said then <laughs> then we would then we would not go like this over the floor. We would all go just in exactly the same circle because then we would look for the most efficient part <laughs> um, uh, around the floor. I thought that cannot even be true, right? So so where do you think that comes from, Tom? When people say that, and they say I it's so it, definitive I, that there is no discussion possible. It is function before I, form, Sean. Actually, I don't know, but maybe they think it's fancy to say it because it's interesting form bef uh, function before form. And when I then say, or you both together, uh, we are not agree, <laughs> they are really surprised. And that's the fun of it. So we, sometimes you make fun of, of it. Yeah. And yeah, that's, um, yeah. I don't know I where it comes from, Sean. Yeah, you I, know it? No, no, no. I mean, I tried to find it. I, I do know that um, that some people say it. Uh, and But actually, if you ask them more explanation, they can't. Um, a lot of ballroom teachers, actually, they, they try to give at least their interpretation of, of it, right? So if your women is a little bit more <coughs> to your right side, then they come with something else more subjective in my mind. But that mm -hmm, becomes always mm -hmm. a complicated discussion. They say, oh, then she can move better. Okay, so if I would do it exactly okay. on the left side, then mm -hmm. it doesn't move better. No, because we don't do that. We don't have, you know, if you if you do ballroom dancing, your lady should be on your right side. Okay. Okay. I've never yeah. seen it where that is written that it should be. <laughs> I know yes. everyone does it. <laughs> but I, I know that, but there's no rule. <laughs> no, it's like the chicken and the egg. Uh, I'm thinking about that one. Mm -hmm. um, y both you need because you need the function, not always, yeah. and you need the form, like yeah. the brand what you have on your cup. So it's not necessary to have it on. But yeah. if the brand um, has a higher pr priority, you cannot drink from the brand. You cannot drink. Functional for the drinking. The, the brand has no function. For other things, the brand has function. So then I come back to that. You need to, your lady needs to be a little bit more on your right. So then she also on the right side of it. And then I say to some of the <coughs> teachers, but they, I don't want to insult them. I'm just laughing. I said, did you know that the original function, why someone is on the right side, actually does not exist anymore? And said, no, 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 it still exists. I said, no, the original function, the original function, why a lady is on my right side is because I used to have my sword on my left. That's the in the original, ballroom dancing. In show. the ballroom dancing. The ball, that, yes, that's yes, what I said. Yes. That is the original function, why it's mm -hmm. on the right, not left. So things sometimes stay, which is perfectly fine. Yes. I mean, I. And I yes. Yeah. And if you look to the ballroom dancing, they changed the form and they don't know that change the form because mm. they say because we change the form then it gets a, a more um better function i was uh, looking for a different word because i never use or never yeah. i try not to use better um there mm -hmm. is not existing better and uh well yeah i must say uh definitely under influence of um of people that I work with, and you are one of them, that I started to use. I, it's, I, I can see sometimes the function the way it was intended, but I am way, way more open to it. 
So let me give you an example, right? So, and this is a boring technical thing. So forgive me if I do that a little bit, but there's a, there's a moment in dancing where we ask the lady to go to my left side and, and she gets into a fan position, right? And then the, the technic book wrote, uh, it is, and the man should be lined up to the side and slightly forward. Now it's very technical. And in the beginning, when I was teaching dancing, I said, that's how it must be because it's function before form. Uh, I didn't use that, but that's how it must be. But then I saw, okay, if I want to have a certain lead, this indeed works better, but I came a little bit further, but it's only if I want to make that choice. If I care about that, if I don't care about that, you know, then it's okay. So I don't want to be saying someone you should care about a better or, I mean, I care a lot about lead and follow, that that's okay. But if someone else cares a little bit less about it, then that should be okay too. See, yes. That's where I started to struggle. Like, hey. No. Well, what is yes. yeah. does that make sense so i am caring yes about absolutely that's my personal choice and i can of course not push my personal choices per se on the other person no what i realized in this ballroom dancing standard mm -hmm. dancing when the girls before they were like they had the head like this mm -hmm. now the women's head goes more backwards yeah Go more like this. and yep. then more sidewards yep. and then even the the back, back. is changing start, also starts so, yes starts more to bend so they don't see 100 years ago because dancing is an evolution a change always every day yeah. every month every year but it goes so slow that we not mention it or are conscious about it that a change a change and then when you look from now 20 years further it will change yeah. it will not so the form will change yeah. if the function will probably change too but i don't know maybe is it just cosmetically or not you never know if would be change a function the same with the handhold in the ballroom dancing they have it like like this mm -hmm. together oh. and they say i can better lead because as i said it's just a form when you do it like that you still have the same not the same connection uh but it has no influence on the function and still they say yes it had absolutely influence mm -hmm. on the function uh mm -hmm. okay i let them how they are they they can think what they want uh i think differently about it so if the fingers are like that or that or this maybe there could be a slight different of a function but it's not so big so what the most of them do they imitate each other and take exactly the same position because they believe that this one is the correct one and all the other uh, holds would say all other holds would be wrong yeah. and that is a strange thought for a designer or for a choreographer to think like that because then is the function probably they think the function would be higher than the form and that's um yeah, sometimes in a technique, maybe you need it, but, um, and still there, they are also busy with form. How yeah. to put a small ship in it, uh, a very, very small ship in the telephone, how you uh, design it. So they are busy with space and with form they are. because they are looking how yeah. efficient, efficient they can make the form. And this is yeah. why, the phone is like that because it's still Bauhaus because uh, Steve Jobs was inspired the iPhone actually it's a brand but still he was inspired for um, to make it like that and the brown calculator on it it's still um, 
from Bauhaus, I will take it here and show it. This is Bau, Bauhaus, actually Brown, that's the brand. And it's very ge geometric and very minimalistic. And, yeah. um, and yeah. some people like it or not. But yeah, the <clears throat> interesting thing, of course, with artists and and and, and not only in dancing, but, but dance is an art form and people are with that. They, they are purposely try to, you know, mix functionality and form up. And I, I think one of the most easiest to understand example is always the moonwalk, right? Because in principle, if you do normal walking, functional walking, you would not have your flat foot would not move over the floor. That would be weird in normal walking. But Michael Jackson and the people who started to work on the moonwalk, they just, they do the opposite. <laughs> the foot that is flat on the floor moves and the foot that goes on toe ball, right, is the one that is steady, which is, if you think about normal walking, it's the other way around, right? And um, so that gives that, that amazing effect that he slides over the floor. And then, of course, people took that nowadays to a whole different level of moon, moonwalking. It's just incredible. And it feels that, and that's what dancers typically try to do, to make a movement that seems to be impossible from a normal functionality point of view. And that makes it interesting. So... Um, so if you would if you would do pure function before form, the moonwalk would never exist. <laughs> Does that make sense? Though? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So so uh, whether there is of course some controversy whether Michael Jackson was the first real person who did the moonwalk, but that's not important. What's important is they 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 wanted to reverse that because it's that's interesting to look at. But if he would have been only thinking about, no, it needs to be function before form, things like the moonwalk, trust me, they would not exist. No. He, he was, um, how do you say, inspired from other people yeah. to do the moonwalk. Yes, yes, yes you yes. know that. You yeah. and I know that. But sorry. But yes. it, it, it is for the history that's important. But, you know, it is just to show, and there are many more movements than that, that if we as choreographers would only develop it from a functionality point of view, a lot of movements would not exist in dancing. No, no, absolutely not. And the tools what I have in mm -hmm. for my uh, to make to create a form. Mm -hmm. First of all, why I call it a form? Yeah, and I like that. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good angle. <coughs> because. You in English, it would be in pure English, it would be shape. Mm -hmm. But maybe the listeners don't know that in the design world or architect world, shape is a pure two dimensional form. Shape and three dimensional, you get a form, depth, length, and height. And the word form comes from the word forma figura from the latin and shape is a pure english word what we what only english speaking people use and this this is why we speak about form before function or function before form and not function before shape and and shape before function yeah that's right yeah, yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, do we have, uh, do we have, do we need function? Yeah, no, absolutely, no, no doubt about it. It is for us, it's more for you and me, it's a little bit more, you know, uh, bringing that discussion up. And, and, you know, if we use dance and movement in, uh, let's say, in a therapy setting, you know, then, of course, the function of the, of the therapy is more important than the form. Obviously, if you look at it in a strictly artistic uh, way, there is who cares about the function, <laughs> right? Uh, then uh, that's when you put it in a competitive setting, you get some sort of a little bit of a clash between mm -hmm. the two, mm -hmm. right? Because if it's pure form before function, then a lot yes. of people say, no, I can't judge it because I don't know if this is cha-cha or what, if, where you and I sometimes think, who, who cares? <laughs> yeah. But yes. if you want to do Actually, it in a, 
yeah, yeah. if you want to measure it, um, like in a competition, <laughs> it's not only in ballroom dancing, as you said last time, it's also now you see contemporary um, uh, competitions and you see people gravitating a little bit more to function than form. Absolutely. Competition. And I think, not I think, I'm sure, dancing yeah. is an art form. Oh, yeah, sure, and you sure. try to be creative in that form. Yeah. And my tools for to create a form is geometric, straight lines. It mm -hmm. could be uh, like a, a circle or a straight line or a triangle. And or the opposite of it is organic. Mm -hmm. So curved lines, broken lines. And then you come also immediately to the two uh, elements what form needs it's a straight and a curved line all what we have around us has only these two elements or the combination of it and it's always a combination of curved and straight lines and this makes the form look around your pen uh, i have a pen here yes and look to the paper here. That's and the words on it. But um, come, I will come back to actually to the dancing. So I have geometric, organic, symmetric, asymmetric, and singular and composed in the in the world of architect world. It would be you work with stone, metal glass wood that would be the elements if you make a combination of it then you have a composed uh, material material used if you use a single material only wood then it would be from wood but the elements from it could be also again singular or composed from wood and if you would compare that to dancing when i turn only my body is my instrument that it's the whole wooden thing what could move actually wood cannot move but when it could move then my head is singular my shoulder is singular my hands are singular because it's a human being is built up bilateral and uh, unilateral would say one side of the body and then when you have one side of the body then it would be asymmetric. So that was a short explanation. These are my elements to to make a form and how I can create a form. And I try to mix them and uh, compose them together. And then something unique will come out and that will be a unique form. And we, Sean and I, we let the artist, the dancer, choose from these elements. And then it gets a, a unique, um, how would you say, a, a unique stamp, actually, from that person. And this is the beauty of it. And then it's more form before function, because you are busy with the elements of form. And then it creates some function when you uh, dance on that floor for yourself. And this could be different from other people. Yeah, oh, absolutely. No, I, I, to I totally agree. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it, it is, uh, and, it's, and, it's, and I think just with this, I know it's a lot, already a lot what Tom mentioned, specifically if you can't see it and only listen to us. But if you uh, if you think about the elements that uh, Tom, even if you take only, uh, if even if you take only four, it becomes already so much what you can do. Um, but if you just think about straight lines and 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 organic lines, then um, then already you can see that you can make a lot of combinations uh, in in it um, so the ballroom world and in typically in our world we think very quickly uh symmetric right look at the design of my clothes is a very symmetric 
design why not three stripes on one side and only one stripe on the other side but okay that is asymmetric but still for my feeling would still be quite symmetrical to be honest <laughs> but yeah still uh, but it's yes. already uh, that's already asymmetric in our in our so we, we we like that people because people come from a point on where they like to understand things but art yes. is always trying to <clears throat> challenge a little bit that part so yes uh, that as asymmetry makes it yeah. more exciting this it's is why when I, when i was uh, started with dancing i yeah. thought all the clothes yeah. must look symmetric all the steps must look symmetric yeah. this is how they teach me and yeah. i couldn't see the other side because the other side makes it more interesting and yeah. the combination of it and the choice how you can combinate these two elements symmetric and asymmetric in the 10 body parts this is what i have in my method in the gem method i work from the body awareness of 10 points and say the hands if i would put my hands like this then the form is asymmetric but the space where i have it is symmetric and now I get an asymmetric space and an asymmetric form. Yeah. While well, Thomas moving his hand. Uh, and yes. A lot of people cannot see this. No, no, I cannot see that. So yeah. So Correct. no, no, that is uh, that is absolutely uh, right on. And only only just using your hands and trying to experiment what symmetric and asymmetric is is already you know quite uh, quite interesting you know i keep the form the form i have a flat hand up and i keep them exactly the same i think they look parallel now so this is still uh, symmetric right but what happens to when i turn it like this how would you call yes it? it's still yeah. symmetric in form but yeah. asymmetric in, in space. space in space yeah so now can you imagine if you have all these elements and you are a little bit more conscious of making these choices and uh, and stay for a moment a little bit away what we believe is right and wrong uh, a very you know at least interesting thing could happen and you might have a tendency that you like geometric forms more there's nothing wrong with it <laughs> but you also get more feeling for geometric forms if you explore the organic forms um, that is the interesting part in, in yes and still it has a function sean because oh, yeah. yes when we when we get born everything around us is symmetric yeah. and then we learn also to think like that and if you culture, yeah. yes yeah. and if you go to a competition they used because i think in my um world <laughs> in my own world i can only speak for myself is dancing absolutely unnatural yeah it, it, it has of course but, but and that's why it becomes an, an a lot of art is unnatural <laughs> yes yes yeah, a absolutely lot of, a lot of art is unnatural and to yes. challenge that oh today yes. today uh, people we talk about form and specifically what we can see and experience in our body we, uh, tom and i could and probably we will is the use of music uh, you see actually the same things emerge is that we have a tendency to use the, the music more symmetrical. Uh, yes. And, and so we go from literally, literally to the same point in the next measure if we can, which is symmetrical, right? Uh, and then we try if our partner to move on that same point too, which is symmetrical. <laughs> uh, mm. So uh, you could use these, most of these things you can also use in the use of music, which makes a, an interesting discussion. If you combine these things, can I do symmetrical yes. movements on and use the music asymmetrical? then yeah. suddenly people go, what, what are you guys ton are you sure are you completely out of your mind now we don't have... mm -hmm. <laughs> but 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 yes. challenge yourself a little bit on that thing yes they say it's not on in the music when you are asymmetric. asymmetrical asymmetrical yes yep. and you are asymmetrical you could be um ignore the sounds and then do the opposite or you when i say tick tick and i do with my head tick 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 
then I'm very symmetric. Yeah. My head and the ticking go the same. It's quite logical because we are born like that, to think like that. And um, to do it, our conscious, but the listening and the looking what we see and the brain from our conscious, we want to merge them together. And I can understand that. And mostly I do the same too. I put it on the sounds, what I hear, I try to translate it in movement. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and uh, there is no good and wrong in it. And the function of a judge when you do competition dancing is they don't know it, but from the unconscious, they judge symmetry and geometry. And actually, all these dancers learn a trick. This is why I told it's unnatural, because you learn all these steps. And everything what you learn is in the first um, in the first point not natural, because you learn a new skill. You're not born with that skill. You learn that skill. And um, in general, there are people they are already dancing in the stomach. <laughs> But it's um, it's a communication tool, and how more we communicate with that body, and how more skills we learn, how more um, we can speak with that body. Mm -hmm. It's like I learned the language English. Uh, I can practice a little bit more. Uh, German, Dutch, Russian, Chinese, Japanese. If I speak this language or Spanish because then I can speak with more people and you can see that with the body too. If you learn more skills and you have more tools like symmetry, asymmetry, asymmetry, geometry, organic, single or composed, you can compose more elements with each other and you can make more choices to bring a unique form as an artist to that floor. And in the comp competitive world, they are not used to that. To that, they want that everybody looks in one way or the other way the same. Straight legs, turned feet, point feet, in the ballet the same, and they try to follow that path. But realize we spoke a little bit, uh, maybe twenty minutes ago about it. It's an evolution. Because the ballet dancer from 100 years ago is not so light anymore. Maybe at that time they did two turns in, uh, say, in two seconds. Now they can do six turns in two seconds. For that's, sure. Yeah, that's, um, it's evolution. It, it's growing and developing to another point. And you can see it more like the Olympics. It's Sitius, Altius, Fortius, stronger, higher, and what was the other one? Faster. Faster, yes. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. And and this is where our world is going. And also, we are influenced by our uh, environment because we see our social media, the news, the people around. We get influence and imitate forms and we make something new from it. So would that be everything function? No, no, because it, no. The, the, the need not in my opinion, at least, at least. No, no, no. It, so, yeah. So, um, the, the other side is, um, it's, it, it's really, it's really good to understand the function. So we took, you have these 10 yes. body parts. Uh, that that Tom always talks about. Of course, you have more body parts, but we make it a little bit easier to talk about ten. Um, and all these ten body parts obviously have a function, right? They have a function to do something. It's really good to understand the function of a rotator and the function of a bender in your in your. That's really good. Yeah, very interesting, Sean. And the combination of that one. Nice. Yeah. It's the technique, actually. Yes, exactly. So and then, yes, then you disappear automatically in form. <laughs> yes, um, yes. But and the, 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 the yeah. yes, and the body parts you keep on the place, yeah. and the bending and the rotating one, yeah. 
yeah. you coordinate actually three ones already one it's active on the place yeah one is rotating and the other one is bending so we have already three elements and if you conscious about it be aware how you use them then you have your own created your own technique from your inner body to the outside world and if people look to you and you can define that in space the form because i call it form you define in space and movement you defined in time dynamic you defined that in time and if you can combinate that sean you get the unique form exactly how you said it yeah and so so that's um that's it so you know they asked that question we had a colleague who who was very strong at now it's always function and form uh but also he of course you know give a deeper thought and thought you know of course that is not true and the other way around is also not true um no, no, so no. i have a tendency in dance specifically when i choreograph to let form uh, you know be in the lead huh? there's nothing wrong if you want to do it differently it's just what i choose to do you know I, I i have a i have a thing in my head that i think that we can create that and then i will find the functions that <laughs> make that possible um and so that's um that's that's it form form or function you know yes. is form leading or is function leading um well, we'll come back what, definitely on it yes yes no, one ahead. point sean one mm -hmm. point actually the technique is um a function i would normally say yeah or yes a function yeah. but the technique actually comes from the word technique mm -hmm. and technique it's old greek i think is it yeah. greek latin it's coming from the art the art was first there and That's the hard. technique follow the art yeah. and uh, this is, makes it unique and um and of course, both need each other to be more efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is definitely true. But uh, but also efficiency is uh, for you and me in creating of dance. Definitely not always the first thing that I'm looking at. No, 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 no. Absolutely well, I, not. Yeah. If it comes, we're to looking of freedom, freedom of freedom mind, and choice of the dancers, and yes. Um, and then, of course, there is a challenge to do that either in the context of whatever the comp competitive rules are. Of course, that, that's a challenge. Uh, but, you know, once in a while, you just get yourself also free from all these things, you know. <laughs> like, remember when you talked about it, uh, we talked about it, you put some music on, and can you dance what you feel? Get yourself, you know, who there is no right and wrong if you feel that you no, need to no. put your finger in your ear that's what you feel <laughs> you know that that's perfectly fine it's 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 liberating but explores also your possibilities yeah you remember that one sean oh of course on the know. form straight lines and curve lines yeah if yeah. the audience could see that and i put my finger there maybe sean can explain it that's yeah yeah so we had this discussion when you know that when you make uh when you put your 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 uh, index finger with your uh with your thumb together you make a circle right uh, we think we make a circle but our bones don't make a circle it's just a combination of straight lines and since there are small bones in a certain order you know they give us the illusion of a circle which is incredibly interesting that by itself is what we have a lot of straight geometrical bones right but we want to create illusions of different forms that, that is just intriguing for most people if we would only do straight lines i don't think actually you really like it you think you like it but i don't think you really like it to see it um but hey that is me I just we would like you to challenge you in exploring this form. Um, uh, it's a little bit harder for pure English uh, speakers to get the word form. I noticed that in my teaching, I teach in the United States. I say, oh, you mean shape? I said, it's fine if you call it shape, but technically, you know, for Europeans, because in most European language, the word form exists. 
as a 3D, uh, as a 3D uh, form. Yes, yeah. 3D, and it's in German, Russian, um, Dutch, Danish, Italian, Italian, Swedish. Polish, Swedish. It's everywhere the same. And Dutch, in France, yeah. it's yeah, Forma yes. Figura. Yeah. Yes. yes. Interesting thing. Well, one mm -hmm. of our topics for today was uh, is a full is form following function or is function following form uh, we don't give you a definitive answer but we would like you to explore what is uh, your answer and maybe there is no definitive answer so we leave that up to you with that Ton, thank you for you sharing your knowledge of course we had some history lesson in art when we went from uh you know bauhaus to the style uh, you know the style it's dutch uh, and uh we explored many things in there interesting things and then we even touched on uh geometrical music who would have known that right that you can be symmetric and geometrical in music you know anyhow that was that tone. I liked it a lot. Um, although that's also subjective, of course. <laughs> yes, absolutely, Sean. Um, there is no golden standard for it, eh? No, <laughs> no. But I hope you guys, listeners, you know, ladies, gentlemen, boy, girls, you dancers out there, non-dancers, I hope you liked uh, our podcast, this case, uh, Dance Jams. Uh, don't forget, you can listen to us on... Uh, YouTube, you can listen to us on Apple, you can listen to us on Spotify, and of course on our own website. Uh, let me put them uh, right here for a moment. You know, the website is www or https, it depends on what you like to type, gemdance the slash podcast, and we have also Spotify Dance Gems, and then on uh, on YouTube, um, it is at Tom Grayton, uh, slash podcast. Yes, that's um, that's where we are, Tom. Um, anything very, else? Very, very, no, very interesting. Maybe I sit, I thinking about one subject. Maybe we mm -hmm. can do this also. The difference between shape, form, design. That would be also to take in a small uh, to to look what the difference is. Because there is a difference in it, and we didn't spoke about it. No. Uh, but maybe we, when we speak next time about maybe just only about form, maybe yeah, we, we would. Could, yeah, yeah, we, we could. We could definitely do that. Yeah, I think that fits in. Uh, you know, a few episodes ago of our podcast, we said you know um, words and dancing and. Um, and it's okay if you have a general talk and you mix it a little bit up, design and form and stuff like that. That's perfectly fine. But if you want to teach and you want to learn, it actually helps you if you have very specific meanings with specific words. Because, you know, Ton and I always use this example, right? If I say to, hey, Ton, let's talk about a chair. And Ton could have this, you know, very comfortable leather chair with, you know, cup holders to watch television. And I have mm -hmm. maybe this very functional chair just to sit behind my desk. And we can talk for this about hours without thinking that we are talking about the same thing, but we don't. Right. Yes. And therefore, it's kind of helpful if you have that. Right. Not to know it better, but it's helpful to have specific meanings for specific words yeah yes thank you very much sean you did a great job <laughs> you too um well uh dear people we see each other hopefully for the next time with another episode of dance jams um don't forget to follow us if you can uh, and don't forget you know ton and i are uh, love to teach dance so if you want to invite us for some workshops or some talks around a certain topic then uh, don't be shy and um and invite us for that we it, it's not only our pleasure but it's actually our passion to do that um absolutely so so, so we'll do that whether it's only ton but who wants only ton you get two yes 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 two. yes get two for the price for one <laughs> for, for the one, price that, for that, one that, 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 <laughs> we have to talk about that <laughs> all right yeah, all right sure. um i'll see you in the next episode tom um who knows what we come up with this was dance jams i start the music maybe you want to say goodbye to the people yes thank you very much if you came till here for listening and hope 
that we see or not we see that we hear us yeah, or you hear us yeah, next time yeah, yeah. <laughs> on youtube you can actually see us right yes, yes all right yes. you people thank you very much for listening uh, once again today we talked about does form follow function or does function follow form this was of course ton greten and sean dorf with their podcast spotify uh, uh no with their <laughs> podcast dance gems <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye bye Tom. I'll Thanks. see you. I'll see you in the see next you. time. Bye bye, Sean. Bye bye. <laughs>